Hi everyone and welcome along. This week we're looking at painting feathers and that means we're actually going to do two tutorials. So today I'm going to give you uh, an introduction into how to create those beautiful feather shapes and do some lovely fantastical loose watercolour techniques and create some beautiful feathers. And then in our next session I'm going to look at some actual bird feathers that we see around us and in the garden. So grab your paints and let's get started. So we're going to begin with the absolute basics of feather painting. I've been painting all sorts of feathers whilst I've been researching and practicing this and I realised that you can get a bit overawed with all the choice out there. So let's just begin with something really really simple um, and I'm going to use Prussian blue and I'm using a really really large size 12 connoisseur brush which is the larger range from the master stroke i think series 100 it's called but there's episode notes links below so i've got it really really sort of fully saturated in water but also now what i want to do is i want to just kind of remove some of that excess i don't want there to be too, too sopping wet and what i'm going to do is i'm going to paint the sort of two sides of a feather and in doing that, I am going to sort of create the central spine, the sort of quill of the feather, just by sort of using unpainted negative space. So let's have a go, shall we? So just try to make one side a bit straighter than the other and curling the other one in. And then on the other side, There we go, down it comes. Lovely. And I'm gonna put that brush to one side and I'm now going to just start to shape my feather a bit more with a size two brush. So first off, I'm just going to sort of get that top looking a bit more together and a little bit straighter here and there. And now what I'm gonna do so I'm just going to use the wetness already on the page to just start giving a little bit of extra shaping to this feather. And you have to work quite quickly because although that was quite a lot of water and paint that went on the page there, it was quite a sort of large expanse and so it's not like it's pooled lots of water. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more concentrated Prussian blue and I'm going to do the first fun little blend and I'm just going to paint sort of further down on both sides and that negative space now turns into the bottom of the quill. And if I just clean off my brush, I'm now going to use just the little bit of colour, extra colour I've got here, to start those extra really sort of downy little fluffy bits you get. To make really, really delicate little pieces. Now that to me is a really really good basic feather. You've got a central quill, you've got a nice shape with a little bit of shaping and then you've just been sort of bringing out that quill at the bottom and those little downy feathers. That is a really good starting point so that is how I would recommend you sort of begin your feather painting. However we're here for pattern for fun for exciting mixes so what I'm going to do because I've been talking a little bit is I'm going to re-wet this sort of two sides of the feather just for the sake of teaching so I've just wetted my large brush there and I'm just for the sake of this with as few brush strokes as possible because I don't want to disturb this too much lovely Okay, so we imagine our feather was still wet. If you wanted to do some really cool 
patterns on it, which I know is we're all here for patterns on feathers, satisfying patterns. Well, here is a really, really fun one. Using the side of the brush angled right down, we've got some lovely pattern stripes. I'm kind of really enjoying how that little dot of paint is splashing across the other side. And then I'm just going to turn the feather over and match the other side. And what's happening, because I'm making sure that the sort of end of my brush was in the middle both times, it means that the brush stroke kind of are mirrored against each other. You've got sort of more of a blob in the middle and it sort of fades out to the sides. And that is just a really, really fun way of making your super simple feather look just a little bit more impressive. Now, some more things we can do to build upon this very simple first feather is to actually go back in with that. I've just got, this is just Mars Black. And now I'm going to paint up the side of my unpainted line which not only gives the central quill a little bit more definition, but it also gives my sort of black marks a bit more of a, of a starting point, I suppose. And I'm just gonna do a little bit up that side and then just add a few of these little downy feathers in a very, very dilute black, almost nothing on the brush. So I'm just using a nice, fine, delicate, rounded point brush to do this one. And then all I'm gonna to do to finish this one off is because when you paint color on onto a wet surface, it, it inevitably sort of blends and fades. I'm just gonna take another blob of black and just pop it in the center there to give more of an actual pattern. And pretty much across this feather, that central unpainted line has held its shape. We just had a tiny bit of overlap there, but it just gives a lovely crispness to the feather, contrasting the really sort of delicate feathery edges. So that is where I would recommend you begin when you are looking at feather painting. But now we're going to just take it one step further. Our next feather, we're going to try one on a bit of a curve. So I'm going to begin with a, just a handy pencil curve, just a quick line to give us our central stem. A bit like if we were painting flowers and leaves, we always like to start with a little stem like that. Now I am going to begin with some nice Prussian blue again. Prussian blue is just a really gorgeous colour for demonstrating, it's a bit dreamy. Um, but this time, instead of just doing two sort of up-down lines, we're going to get a little bit more advanced. Don't worry, <laughs> when I say advanced, it's just, we're just giving it a little bit more interest. So I'm still using my really large brush, but quite soon I will be moving down to my size eight because I think I've got more control, but I just want to try and get as much sort of color onto the page with as few brush strokes as possible because the sort of, the best feathers I think are the ones that look like they just sort of appeared as if by magic with a very, as little sort of in, involvement from the human hand. Okay, let's just go for it. So I'm gonna come down one side first and I'm going to do lots of little strokes now and what's happening with this is this is just allowing me to get a slightly more interesting shape on my feather. So with those single brush strokes I'm now going to take my size 8 brush and I just want to now just start to finesse a little bit and get a little bit of more feathery individual strokes. I 
then towards the bottom. Remember, I haven't actually got any new paint on my brush right now. I'm just using what's already on the page. And I am just going to do that, just a little bit of downy feather. Okay, for the other side, I'm just gonna stick with this smaller brush because I want the other side to just be a little less out there. And then being careful to maintain a little bit of unpainted space up the middle and then to just give a little bit of extra featheriness. Lovely. Now what I'm keen to do is to drop in a new colour here. So I'm going to get a bit of pink and just run that up the middle. And you might find you need to sort of keep on adding a little bit of water to your feathery wash because it does like to dry quite quickly but that's looking really nice and I've just used a bit of permanent rose there so you do have to work quite fast with feather painting especially these sort of loose dreamy ones as I like to call them so they're little downy feathers just using the absolute dregs of what we've got left and then purposefully allowing this to just sit in and dry a tiny bit. I want to show you what happens when you pop in those sort of those detail lines but this time we're doing it on a bit of an angle aren't we? So let's have a look. So satisfying. And just watch how it creeps up to the unpainted central line but doesn't go any further it's wonderful okay turn it over and then this time well, this is upside down I hope you see that I'm going to angling the brush much higher just to capture that now what's happening here is we've got it blending in so the blue which we put on sort of is, is just starting to creep in and blend and maybe losing some of that definition we had at the beginning, but that's fine. These feathers are all about sort of experimentation and to be honest, for me, I really love what's going on here. What you can do, if you want, is just with a clean wet brush, you can take that colour and just sort of help it push to the edges in these little sort of liney brush strokes which just helps give the appearance of a real sort of ridged textured feather. It's all about having a light touch though with this. You don't want to overdo it and make this feather look really overworked. So I'm really thrilled with this um, but what we do need to do is give ourselves a bit of a central stem. So, if I get a little bit of Mars Black and just mix it in with my blue, give myself a kind of slaty colour. I am now, just with my size 2 brush, there's very little paint on my brush because I don't want this to be a really dominant colour. But for the beginning, just pop that in. And then I'm going to paint, there we go, just up the outer edge in this dark colour. Just sort of building up layers. 
And I'm actually painting more on the, the painted space rather than sort of getting too involved in the little sliver of unpainted space. I don't want to go too far in. Really nice. And then, as I did with this one, I just want to add another layer of concentrated blue. I'm sort of mixing up my blues a little bit. I've got now a bit of French ultramarine. There we go. It's just fun, like feather painting, you can just keep messing about with it. And the reason we're, we're messing about and playing is because we are going to do a second session uh, for the next YouTube tutorial where we're actually going to look at real feathers that come from real birds because I'm very keen to show how these sort of playing around techniques actually do apply to some real amazing birds that we find in our gardens, um, down at the park, absolutely amazing um, if you just take a closer look. So we've got two feathers now, one completely straight up, really simple. This one just being a little bit more sophisticated in terms of the shaping. And now we're gonna do one more for this introduction to feather painting. I've just brought the burnt sienna into shot because we're going to approach our feather once more in a slightly different way. So I'm just mixing up a sort of brownie blue color and I'm going to draw a curved stem once again but this time we're going to start by painting our stem because I want to show you how you can use the colour there in the stem to create a rather fun blend so I'm just painting down that line and then what I want to do is create a unpainted central channel there doesn't matter if your line isn't particularly thin because it is going to become blended in with the rest of the feather so we'll use what we've got on here go for this blue again so this is going to be a more of a little sort of downy feather that you get so I'm going to do a nice sort of curved top and it's touching the brown there, coming down in and I'm going to stop it there and I'm going to get my smaller brush, my size 2 and look we get a tiny bit of that blend. I want to just sort of soften the top keeping it nice and wet and with these sort of little feathers that you find um, there's a lot more sort of fluffy downy plumage and what I'm doing is I'm just sort of painting up into the colour there with a very very watery kind of mixture to almost sort of remove some of the paint and I'm just trying to be as light touch with my brush as possible and I'm moving quite fast so that I get really nice big sort of smooth sweeping feathers and then down this side whoops there we go I'm going to use my size 8 brush to just come down in on the other side because there's not going to be quite so much So your brush strokes, it's really important that you sort of follow that curve and we can just sort of smooth those two in together if they've touched already. And again, with that slightly sort of ochre very dilute colour. It just works really nicely with the, with the blue I find it's got quite a natural feel to it. So that's really nice. And now 
what we're going to do is we're going to just pop in a few little dots. And what I'm hoping, yeah, is that some blend like the ones on here and some are going to remain and what that means is we get a nice build up of texture because we can come back to that side when our wash has dried but I'm doing these in really, really dilute colours. In fact, I might even yeah, play around with those ones. Just dab my brush a bit on them. Just creating a bit of texture, a bit of dappled texture. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this to dry. And then we're going to add more dots on top. This has just been given a moment to get a little drier and then we can now add a few more dots but I, I don't want it to be sort of 100% bone dry because I rather like the softness of these dots. There's something rather sort of eastery about this feather, very spring-like. So yeah, I'm just sort of playing around with building up the textures here. And next session, we're going to be looking at some real, real feathers that belong to birds, which will be rather nice. And it's just kind of amazing. It's, it's a mind-blowing thing to see the patterns on some of these birds that we just sort of, you know, see around and about every day. Not particularly exciting, but once you get a closer look, some of those feathers. Okay, last thing we're gonna do in this introduction to feathers is, of course, if you look closely at a feather, that you can see the amazing lines and ridges that run up and down with all the tiny, tiny um, feather lines. And so what you can do sort of getting, it's the balance of getting like a little bit on your brush, there we go. It's a little bit like the leaf detail quandary I have, that I never want to do too much. And then we'll see what's gonna, gonna come in and disturb some of these, it's quite nice. Um, but if you, with a very, very faint, faint, dilute amount of water on your brush, that I like to sort of choose a colour that is somewhere in between the central stem there, the central quill, and the colour of the feathers. You just can give your feather just a little bit more detail, but we don't want to do this too heavily because this can be the thing that ruins the charm of your loose watercolour feathers because that's the thing, it, essentially they are loose. These also are little fantastical feathers, so they're not really based on anything real. But that can just be a really nice way to add a tiniest bit of detail. And then with an even smaller brush, down there at the bottom. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this first foray into feather painting. This has been uh, a subject that's been recommended by one of my patrons again, um, which is really cool and it's one of the perks of joining any tier. We did a nice little video actually just explaining what Patreon is. And um, please don't worry, YouTube isn't going anywhere. Like this YouTube channel is here to stay, but it's just a little something extra. If you're really keen to take your watercolor painting to another level and also have a bit more say in what you see, 
on this watercolour channel. But anyway, this for now is your introduction to feather painting. I really hope you enjoy playing around with these little techniques that we've started to learn today and next time we'll be looking at some real life feathers. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that introduction to feathers and that you'll be raring to go for our next session. So I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button below and comment to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Okay, until next time, bye.